West Lake versus Bandicoot. It's an exciting game being in it and watching it. Uh, when you're in the games, yeah, of course you want to win because you're playing against your, your friends, your enemies, and your family. So, um, like Coach Allen said, you're playing against people in your neighborhood, people that go to your church, and your homeboy. It's an important game, so you want to have the brand rights. So you really want to win this game because it's for brand rights. And so when the next time you see that person, you know you have, you'd be proud to say that you won the game. In terms of, um, just the, as a fan, it's kind of like a big thing as a player. Do you get involved with what's going on with them? Or do you kind of want to kind of just, uh, you know, obviously it's, it's a good entertainment stuff. It's a, Like, you know, because a blowout is a lot easier to yeah. enjoy it otherwise. Your momentum builds off here in the band. Without the band, the game would be a different level, but with the band, it's a high level. Um, talking about you commit to Florida, you're going out to what's that been like for being a Florida commit? And, and they're having a great season. You got to be on cloud now. It's great. Uh, talking to Coach Myers every other week, Coach Dan Mullen, Coach Dre. It's been a fun experience. Uh, it's like a dream come true, getting the chance to go to University of Florida, BCS school. Uh, it's been great. Newton driving, <laughs> using the leg strength at 245 pounds, and he picks up his first touchdown in a Gator uniform. You can't oh, settle for further three. review. They, they found another pass that was 3 0. Oh, oh dear! He knows how to become a crowd favorite. It's Tim he? Tebow. Yeah. Look at Tebow. Oh my! Look at everybody. He knows how to get the crowd. He watched it on TV last year. He just run over guys and put quarterback here. You end up uh, going to University of Florida, where you actually right. back up the Heisman Trophy winner Tim Tebow right. for two years. The, uh, last year, you guys win a national championship. I think it was uh, then Florida, and this is kind of funny now, but uh, right. obviously not then. Then Florida head coach Urban Meyer actually said to your dad at the time, he didn't think you had the it factor. Um, right. So you leave Florida, you and your dad drive uh, cross country to Blinn Junior College, which is located in Texas, somewhere between Austin and Houston. Grand you know, you come from something, especially after they won a national championship. You know, it's like, oh my God, like, what, what, did, what, why am I here? <laughs>
I don't, I don't know that I've seen a guy break as many tackles as this guy at quarterback. Uh, and, and so that's that's the big challenge for us is to is to do a great job with our rush lanes, do a great job with our eyes, and, and we got we got to rally to the ball and tackle. Uh, if we don't tackle well Saturday night, it'll be a long night. So uh, that's going to be the challenge. it in overtime. Second and one. Michaela down the backfield. Newton will fake the handoff. Straight ahead, Newton. Now angles right. 10, 5, untouched. Touchdown, Auburn! Empty backfield. Cameron Newton with five receivers. Runs it straight ahead. Lowers his head to the goal line. He's in. Touchdown, Tigers. Cam Newton does it again. 10, Auburn with 11, 17 to go in the half. Cam wants to throw. Here comes pressure. Flushed out to the right. On the run, Cam. Throws with a man around his ankles at the 10 yard line. Passes caught. Oh, what a job by Cam Newton. Cody Burns. Second and goal from the five. Ball on the far hash mark going from right to left. Fake the handoff. Newton up the middle and he just walks in. Touchdown, Auburn. Cam Newton from five yards out. A, a busy day. Uh, a number of layers here to the story involving Cam Newton. There's some new developments that you can share with us, Joe. What do you have? Yeah, Scott, the new developments include allegations of two specific things that Auburn quarterback Cam Newton and his father, Cecil Newton, allegedly said in phone conversations with two people who were recruiting on behalf of Mississippi State during the recruiting process. And those phone conversations were relayed to the Southeastern Conference going back to January. Now, one thing that was allegedly said, well, that was a conversation, Scott, with Cecil Newton, and he told a person recruiting his son, allegedly, that it would, quote, take more than a scholarship to bring Cam Newton to Mississippi State, a request that the school said it would not meet. Again, turning that information over to the SEC. The second separate conversation allegedly took place with Cam Newton himself. And this took place after Cam changed his commitment from Mississippi State to Auburn. Comment, really no comment, or is Auburn trying to say more about the fate of quarterback Cam Newton? Wednesday, Coach Gene Chiswick said that Newton would play tomorrow against Georgia, but today an Auburn spokesman said the school had no comment when asked about Newton's status. So we've been telling you all week, two former Mississippi State players say Cam's father sought money when the Bulldogs were recruiting Newton. So does no comment mean Auburn is just trying to play some mind games with Georgia, or have things really changed? Well, Bob, that's a question being asked all across Alabama tonight. Fox News reporter Libby Amos went out to sample the public's opinion. Uh, Libby, you asked people whether Cam Newton should continue playing. What did they say? Well, I sure did. It's been the topic of conversation now for two weeks. A lot has been talked about, but so far, there's been no smoking gun. So what do you think? Should Cam continue to lead the Tigers for the remainder of the season? Well, a few of you say, of course. Others say it's not a risk worth taking. After days of controversial allegations, the nation's sports spotlight has been burning on Cameron Newton. Amid the questions is Cam's eligibility. I don't. I'm an Alabama fan, and I hope he does play because I, I want Alabama to beat him bad with him on the field, but I don't think it's worth the risk. I think they should bench him um, till everything's proven one way or the other. I think it's in the best interest of the school. You know, he could be perfectly innocent. From what I understand, it was his father that was asking for money, not him. But, you know, he should be given a chance to prove himself and then play. An ESPN.com report alleged that money was sought in the recruiting process of the star quarterback. If allegations are proven, Newton could be ruled ineligible, and the hopes of a perfect season would abruptly end. But many still stand behind the leader of the 10-0 team. Well, I think they should still play him as long as nothing's been proven about him. And you can't bench a, a kid just for allegations and rumors that are floating out there. He's a star. 
he is Auburn's man. I think they should play him. I think what is known so far, if there's smoke, there's fire. Personally, everything that I've heard, it's dealing with Cam and his father and his family and not with the coaching staff of Auburn. So far, I haven't heard not one thing about the coaching staff of Auburn, so I don't see where they would be held responsible. The questions will undoubtedly fly until we find out for sure what, if anything, actually happened. The Tigers had a perfect season in 2004, but did not get a shot at the BCS National Championship. This is the closest Auburn has come to a shot at the national title since then. The Tigers play Georgia tomorrow in Jordan-Hare Stadium. Now, before every game, the team travels out of Auburn, out of the Auburn area for the night. It's being reported that Cam got on the bus with the team today and was all smiles as usual. <laughs> They have deferred, so Auburn will get the ball. Blair Walsh will kick off. Bulldogs, and we are at long last underway. DeMond, Washington, number 14. That's Caleb in motion. And it's the way they go. Yeah. Looking for the block from the Caleb. Here's the Out of bounds at the one-yard line. Here we are. After further review, video evidence shows that the ball carrier broke the plate of the goal line. Crowd going out of the bounds. Touchdown. Quarterback draw. Goes left. Close. I don't believe he got it up. Yeah, and tight to the left side. Now comes in motion. Murray. A lot of time. Deep. A.J. Green. Touchdown, Georgia. Uh, I don't think that was the fullback. I just... Here's Newton back. Deep across the middle. That uh -oh, one Intercepted. Picked up by Bakari Rambo, number 18. He is all the way down to the one yard line. There is a flag. He was the guy who missed one. First down. Play fake again. Murray two strikes out. AJ Green to Mark Washington. Easy touchdown. Easy touchdown. Drills it in the end zone. Oh, oh, caught. Touchdown. Philip Watson Kirkin. I was hoping I'd get to say that. Down and 10. McGill fires it. Wide open. Watson Kirkin for the second time. Gatorade bath for the Auburn head coach. They are the champions of the SEC West. Well, what's going to happen next? Nico Thorpe, Auburn will win. 
little story nor that of his father. And in the face of all of the turmoil, he leads his team from 24 down to a 28-27 victory in the Iron Bowl. Please welcome Heisman Trophy trustee Richard Calico. Thank you, sir. Good evening. I am Richard Calico, and in a moment, on behalf of the Heisman trustees, I will be announcing the winner of the 76th Heisman Trophy. First, I'd like to congratulate all the finalists on their outstanding achievements. They are a credit to college football and the John Heisman tradition of excellent innovation and hard work. The gentlemen standing behind me are ready to welcome one of you into the elite Heisman fraternity. From now on, your name will always be followed by Heisman Trophy winner. Without further ado, the winner of this year's Heisman Trophy is, and the envelope, the winner is Cam Newton of Auburn University. Thank you so much. Keep this card. You should keep it. Oh my God. Um, <clears throat> uh, first, giving all the honor and glory to God, you know, who is the head of my life. And uh, without him right now, you know, we all would not even be here right now. So uh, thank you for that. Uh, I also would like to thank um, my beautiful mother, Jackie Newton, and, and my father. Um, you know, this. <laughs> mm. Take your time. Three deep breaths. Take your time. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I mean. <laughs> but we begin today with Cam Newton. The NCAA has ruled that Newton is eligible for Saturday's SEC championship game even though the NCAA believes that Newton's father, Cecil, did indeed solicit money from Mississippi State. The NCAA said, quote, based on the information available at this time, we do not have sufficient evidence that Cam Newton or anyone from Auburn was aware of this activity, unquote. <laughs> Roman, I'm sure this ruling satisfies you. This is even more agenda-driven than the NFL's refusal to suspend Andre Johnson. Are you kidding me? This, is, this came down this particular way because Auburn is one step from playing for the national championship. Now, I know you agree with that part. You won't agree with the next part that I'm going to say now. If TCU wasn't sitting in the three spot ready to sort of hurt the cartel situation no, for getting in the championship game, no, they, they, would, they, they would go ahead and suspend. I How do you so. make him eligible 24 hours after the Look, school has ruled him ineligible? I, I find it impossible to believe that Cam Newton knew nothing of this. And what this ruling says to me, it's okay for the father or anybody else connected with the family to basically didn't take an ad out Reggie Bush. on Craigslist. Didn't well, we'll get to that. Bush. But you can take an ad out on Craigslist and you can say, what am I bid for a potential first round in Heisman winner? Yeah, if you're Pat Hayden, the AD at USC right now, and you've been telling your kids for a year or so, if your parents do anything, it reflects you on guilty. you. Yeah. You're guilty. I don't know Let's how back, you justify though. this. Let's go back but I, this. I, I absolutely agree that if Auburn were not in the if position, they were seven to, and five or nine and three, then I don't think we'd get this ruling. Ineligible. I don't think we'd get and this if, ruling. And no. if Michigan State. And pick another school in another kind of and and USC were three and four and there wasn't the scare well, they, of a non cartel they, number they, moving up. I, look, I'm not going to indulge this cartel nonsense, I but know. didn't they look at the kid from Georgia, AJ Green, and they suspended him for selling a jersey to an agent? Yeah. Did he get hundred eighty thousand dollars, which is the number being floated around with the new family? Was he family? made eligible 24 hours later, even though what he no, did he was okay sit. in my book? He had to sit. Yeah. And this is agenda-driven yeah. joke. This is the slowest you'll see Oregon moving in the next couple of days as Monday night their high-speed offense will be put to the test against top-ranked Auburn in the BCS championship game. The Ducks and Tigers took part Friday in media day at a Scottsdale resort. 
Taking center stage was Heisman Trophy winning quarterback Cam Newton. You know, at the end of the day, this is a business trip. And, uh, you know, we came to, to try to take care of business. And the task at hand is delivering Auburn its first national title since 1957. People on this team know we have a chance to do something great. And uh, we're not just playing for ourselves. We're playing for so many people that doesn't have the opportunity to play but take the pride of Auburn. Oregon takes pride in its high-speed offensive attack that led the nation in scoring, averaging over 43 points per game. Triggering the Ducks' offense is quarterback Darren Thomas, who says doing things quick is a way of life for this team. You're going to see a lot of players just moving fast just because we're so used to moving fast. Everything we do, Coach Kelly preaches, is about pace. Just the tempo and the pace are just overwhelmed everything, just make you do everything fast. Of Oregon's 71 scoring drives resulting in touchdowns, 35 have taken five plays or less. I see the offense is very fast and elusive, and they got very good speed offensively, and I think that we just got to hold our gap and hold our own and not make stupid mental errors. Media Day put the focus on two undefeated teams. Two teams very much alike. We're both really good, you know. We have no losses, so uh, everybody knows that. It's not going to come down to the most talented team or it's going to come down to whoever plays the hardest, you know, and whoever makes the most mistakes. Because they're undefeated and top ranked, some could overlook the fact that Auburn had to come back in eight of their 13 victories. Their defining moment came in the Iron Bowl against arch rival Alabama when the Tigers came back from a 24 nothing deficit. Oregon had just one close call, a 15-13 victory at California. Covering the BCS championship in Scottsdale, Arizona, John Klobuchar, the Associated Press. I don't know what it is, but it's a religion in, the, in this area of the South. Football makes everything go. I mean, it's just a way of life for us. We won the Iron Bowl. We won the SEC Championship. We were undefeated. The winner is Cam Newton. I was so proud. I was wearing my jersey when he won. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. You know, you hate to say that they're spoiled, but they may never see a season like this again. For a long time, they were kind of the laughing stock of the Pac-10. I mean, we've been waiting a long time for this. Hey, man, the Ducks going to the national championship, going natty. It's been uh, pretty crazy right it's here. It's one in a million. It's amazing. It's like the best year to be a freshman at the U of O. Such a rare chance, this trip to the desert. Oregon and Auburn, one versus two. Oh, but so far, it's been the year of Cam Newton, with only a national title, the missing piece. Don't let me fall. Cause I'm glad enough that I'm so very high. That if the clouds were to drop me, then I'd fall out the sky. I don't really know why I'm here. I guess I'm just here for the ride. I swear it feels like I'm dreaming. It's vividly defined, yeah. But it's what's behind both teams that drives it all. Pride. Pride is the reason you're wearing that awful hat. It's your license plate. Or those flags on your car. It's doing this without anyone feeling even the slightest bit strange about it. We duck out the car. If they could go to jail, they want to go to jail in the ducked out car. It's coming out at 8 in the morning just for the chance to talk about your team. So fast. Then doing that chant that you all do. And not because we ask you to. But it's the feeling that all of this is helping and that the team needs us to. Please let the Ducks win. It starts at birth and never falters. It's pride, plain and simple. Hey, I'm high here, I'm standing up and you. Hey! Good job, dude. You're fine. I've seen it all. University of Phoenix Stadium, where college football's final test unfolds. A competition encompassing every emotion driven by the dream to become national champions. Tonight, we feature a Heisman Trophy winner on one team, Auburn's Cam Newton, and the nation's leading rusher on the other, Oregon's LaMichael James. They now come head-to-head -head in the 2011 Tostitos BCS National Championship. It's the number one Auburn Tigers, champions of the SEC, squaring off against the number one. 
And now Auburn starts to pick the tempo up a little bit. Remember, they have an excellent, excellent field goal specialist. Dyer, the freshman, is wrestled down at the 46-yard line. Pleasant, and he He's gets up. back up. Dyer gets back up. Was he not on the ground? Did he stay on top of Pleasant? The Ducks are saying, wait a minute, he was down. But everybody is moving up there. Brent, I think he would have stopped running if it weren't for his own sideline. His entire sideline told him to keep going. 37 yards. Let's take a look at this. His body is under review. And we will review it because I'll tell you, from that look, I did not see a knee down on the ground. Now, I know it's a first look, but take a closer look here, Herbie. Well, he comes down. Dyer bust for the end zone. Reaches for it. Touchdown. A great look right here. Completely surprising Oregon. That time he's down. But where is the ball? Yep, it's going to come down to where the football was. No the question. Right touch. No question. Previous play is on the review. Following the review, it's been determined that the runner's knee was down. The ball was at the half yard line. Auburn wins the BCS National Championship. to that final drive. Score tied. Less than three minutes to go. What did you tell your team in that huddle? Everybody was just staying calm. You know, we've been through this before. And, you know, we, we, we had to execute the plays as that, that coach was calling. And we had to stay calm and just execute. You have had so much adversity. This team has come from behind. But you personally, you fought through it. You've maintained your focus throughout. How would you describe your own journey from Blinn when you left there to get here? You know, it's just a God thing. You know, I thank God every single day. You know, I, I, I'm just his instrument, and he's using me on a consistent basis daily. You know, I just want to, you know, he's using me to, to, to extend his word. And, and, and I'm, a, I'm a prime example of, of how God can, can, can turn something that was bad into something that was very great. What did this season teach you about you, your family, what you believe that you didn't know before it happened? Anything is possible. I guarantee you five or six months ago, nobody would have, you know, bet their last daughter to say that Auburn University is winning the national championship. But now, on January 10, 2011, you know, we're smiling right now saying, you know, we did it. National champions for the first time in more than half a century. Cam Newton, congratulations. ESPN.com's Pat Forty is with us now here on SportsCenter. Pat, what kind of an NFL quarterback will Cam Newton make? Well, Steve, you know, he's got uh, certainly, you know, so the size that people uh, look for at quarterback. Uh, obviously has the maneuverability and escape ability, the athletic ability. Arm strength is certainly not a problem. Um, I think really the question will be more mechanics and reading defenses. He's had a very good uh, offensive coordinator to work with Gus Malzahn, but Gus Malzahn's offense doesn't have a lot in common with most NFL offenses. So, uh, you know, while the, the physical tools are there, I think it'll probably take some time to adjust for him. And, you know, whether anybody's willing to spend a first-round pick on him, I'm not sure at this point. Uh, you know, and it, it really, if you think back on it, Steve, it was certainly, I would say, probably the most impactful, eventful single season any player has ever had in college, for good and for bad. I mean, he was ridiculously productive led his team to an undefeated season in the national championship, but then was involved in certainly one of the biggest controversies in uh, NCAA history, and it's an ongoing thing that's going to keep on dragging until we have definitive word from the NCAA that Auburn's in the clear. Yeah. yeah. Look here. Right after winning the national championship with Auburn, Quarterback Cam Newton went to San Diego, 
to begin training for the NFL Combine and his Pro Day, the two most important events leading up to the draft. Let's look at, uh, let's look at some of this content here. The left. I'm a left a charm connoisseur, you know? Uh, hey, you want to know what's the kicker, though? Extra marshmallows. That left a do you like that stuff? You are what you eat. Breakfast of champions. <laughs> How far out are we? The questions about Cam Newton going into the draft are going to be the fundamental base that he has as a thrower. Uh, is he a thrower or is he an athlete? And this is an opportunity for him to show everybody that he indeed is a good passer. The reality of this situation is, is that perception is going to drive Cam Newton a little bit. And the more he can get the media to perceive him as being a big-time NFL pro prospect, uh, the better chances he has of going early in the first round. Hey, but peep this, though. Everybody can't say they got a billboard of themselves, but I can. On the armor, congratulate the 2010 Heisman Trophy winner, Cam Newton. Yes, sir. Yeah. I'm introducing you to the two of them in my life. You have Hattie Lou Newton, the manufacturer of the Cecil Newton. And you have Jackie Newton, the manufacturer of Cam Newton. Okay. There you go. This is the shrine right here, the Hall of Fame, you every bet. single helmet that all of us done played for. He got TSU alma mater. Yep, yep. Tennessee State, Tennessee not Troy State. State. Tennessee State. Then went to Jacksonville Jaguars. My little brother went to Florida. Then after that, went to Blinn. Then after that, you already know what time it is. So. SEC Championship MVP. And of course, the O'Brien Award. Walter Camp Award. And my man, Mr. Heisman. Yeah. yeah, you ready? Let's get it in. Heisman Trophy winning quarterback Cam Newton has promised to fully participate in all aspects of the process. The one thing that I, I, I want it to be known is that, you know, I want to be transparent through this whole thing. You know, I don't have nothing to hide. If, if I have an opportunity to, to let a person evaluate me as a person, not something that, that has been stereotyped, you know, I think their perception about me will change. You know, I'm willing to take that risk. Newton is currently ranked seventh on Mel Piper Jr.'s big board. And here comes the commissioner. With the first pick, in the 2011 NFL Draft, the Carolina Panthers select Cam Newton, quarterback, Auburn. For the 11th time in the last 14 years, dating back to 98, Peyton Manning, a quarterback has gone first overall in the NFL Draft. Will the result be? Similar to Peyton Manning, which has been pretty darn good. Will the result be something else? There have been number ones that have been pretty darn bad. But there, you know, hope springs eternal at the NFL draft. And Cam Newton is a specimen unlike most any others ever to play the position. I'm sure both of you gentlemen agree. This is a day of remembrance across America. It's also a day of renewal as the NFL's 2011 season gets into full swing. Today, it's the Arizona Cardinals and the Carolina Panthers. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new season of the NFL on Fox. I'm Sam Rosen, along with our newest acquisition, the quarterback, Chad Pennington. Jody Jackson is on the field with us today. And one of the big stories in the NFL coming into the season is Cam Newton, number one pick overall in the NFL draft. 
Here he is starting his first game for Carolina. What are the thoughts? What are the emotions he's feeling right now? Well, Sam, all eyes on Cam Newton. Panthers fans are really excited about this guy. He's a special talent. 2010 Heisman Trophy winner, number one pick in all the draft. For Cam Newton, it's about one phrase. He said, win the one. What does that mean? Win the next play. Don't let the previous play affect the next play. And there is the man we talked about, Cam Newton, wearing number one. He begins his NFL career on the same field he ended his collegiate career with a national championship with the Auburn University Tigers. Coming out, he took over as the starter the last couple of preseason games. There was a flag on the play, and we will check that out. Which Brockle is the fullback off the play fake. Newton's first NFL pass, a sliding attempt. And the catch is made by Steve Smith at the 24. We are back third and seven for Carolina. Five defensive backs in for Arizona. Richard Marshall, the former Panther, is on for Arizona. Here the Cardinals all standing in a two-point stance on the third down. Here comes the blitz. Newton puts it up. He's got a man, and he completes it. Steve Smith is going all the way. Touchdown, Carolina. 77 yards. Cam Newton's first touchdown pass of the NFL. And the Angel of William to the backfield. Everybody out. Newton in trouble. Got loose, faking. And a nice run as he gets a first down at the 37. We go for an update. The pump fake. Newton puts it up to the end zone. Steve Smith. He's got it for a touchdown. He held on. Great pass, great catch. And the Carolina Panthers, after the missed field goal by Jay Feely, marched down the field. Cam Newton coming up with a couple of big plays. The penalty hurt big time. And Smith with a great grab. Newton pump fake. Goes the other side. Olsen makes a nice adjustment. Olsen inside the 10 and down the one yard line. Now you're seeing the tight ends come into play. On second and goal, Newton dives. And he's in. Touchdown. Snap off. And he goes up top. Brandon LaFell with the catch. They pick it up. Newton's got a man, Steve Smith with a leaping grab. He is down at the 22, but there's a flag down. No doubt about that. The Arizona Cardinals win the opening game. Kevin Cobb leading the way. Disappointment for Cam Newton, but man, he has got some future ahead of him. Something special, a great quarterback duel. And the Arizona Cardinals defeat the Carolina Panthers and Ron Rivera in his debut, 28 to 21. The one of one. This is the only person that has happened to, like, I'm the only person that want to be great. You know, here I am, rookie quarterback, trying to win, and don't nobody else want to win just like me. That was selfish of me, man. And I didn't understand that until I had that talk with him. I mean, that confidence level seems to have, have not taken a hit really through through everything that you've been through that has been consistent it's it's a, it's a culture thing and i grew up adoring and idolizing muhammad ali when an athlete when a person speaks uh confidence and it's not cockiness it's not arrogance that's just something that that's how that person is i thrive off knowing that people are coming to watch me play that's what i thrive off that's, that's the entertainer in me. And when they come, I'm trying to put on a show. Because it may be that person first time coming to watch me play. Or it may be that person that said, man, Cam ain't all what y'all think he is. And by the end of the game, you be like, man, bro, Cam, real. That's, that's why I do it. That's why I do it. The only bust talk associated with Cam Newton probably will be when he has his bust enshrined in Canton, Ohio, about 20 years from now. In his first NFL game, Newton threw for 422 yards, 
the most ever by a rookie. The next week, he broke his own record. Guns it long downfield. Steve <laughs> Smith grabs it. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. He finished 2011 with more passing yards than any rookie in NFL history. A lot of people were skeptical about him coming in the league, and from what I saw in the first couple weeks and then playing against him, let's, <laughs> he's got it all. He can make any throw. I think people underrate his arm strength and accuracy. He made a great throw to the corner against us. Oh, and he's down at the one. You would have thought it was Tom Brady or Peyton Manning, Aaron Rodgers. When you got him in the red zone, he's like having another running back out there or a fullback at that. You know, he's that physical. And he has got a touchdown. <laughs> Superman. Surprise. <laughs> That's right. Do the Superman. Oh. I don't see a flaw. I don't, I don't see a weakness in the game. Fields pressure, rolls out, reverses his field, stumbles, now eludes the Redskin. He's going to run 10, 15, 20, cuts to the far sideline, and it's open. He's at the 25, the 30, still on his feet. Cam is like a bigger Michael Vick. Got to get him. Got to get him on the ground, the big guy. Let's go, babe. It takes a line to get this guy down. This guy don't want to go down. You better wrap your whole arms around him or he's going to make you look silly. <laughs> Down goes Cam Newton. No, oh. Newton keeps his balance. What the, the Houdini act by Cam oh. Newton. Unbelievable. I'm about to have him down already. Put your ass up. He has a, a personality that's like no other. You know, a rookie coming in the league feeling so comfortable, smiling, doing the games, enjoying the game, having fun, and still being productive at the same time. You know, <laughs> finding the right words to describe Newton can be difficult, especially when you're reluctant to sing his praises. You can't even explain how good this kid is. The reason I don't want to talk about Cam is because so many people want to put so much on Cam and just being kind of the big brother. He isn't there yet. It's not that I don't want to talk about because I'm tired of talking about him. I don't want to sell him short. Great job, leading us down there, all right? Great job. Good catch. Right. Make it easy for him. He's one year, and look what he's done. To talk about he's a top 100, seeing him every day, I think he has the ability to change the game completely. What can't this kid do? How they judge quarterbacks, how they judge them by their uh, quote-unquote character, um, even how maybe how they judge them by the color of his skin. What is it? It isn't about a running quarterback or pocket passer. He has the ability to show what an athletic quarterback can be, should be, and what you look for. Touchdown! I get a top player in three years, Cam Newton. That star NFL player, Carolina Panthers quarterback Cam Newton, out of the hospital now after fracturing his back, an accident that flipped his truck. Newton lying on a stretcher. His spine fractured actually in two places, then rushed to the hospital. There is a lot of talk tonight whether he'll play soon again. ABC Steve Osinsami this evening. Looking at the wreck, it's amazing he survived. Does anybody hurt? Yeah, he's, he needs an ambulance. Panthers quarterback and Heisman Trophy winner Cam Newton cracked two bones in his back after he was hit by another driver Tuesday, less than a mile away from his practice field. The question tonight, will this million-dollar quarterback and pitch man with a legendary running game be well enough to play Sunday against Tampa? A rare athlete. When, you, when the truck flipped and... Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah I remember. I mean, I was aware throughout the whole thing, and, and one thing that I just, just remember is that, you know, I really couldn't talk afterwards because I was, I was such a shock. You know, I... Opening day, I had him wrapped up, man, and... I definitely thought he was going down, and he just stayed up enough just to get the ball out. And I was like, really? And I was like, come on, this is an opening day sack. This is, that's one of the best feelings. <laughs> Cam Newton's energy and enthusiasm beckoned the camera. And ensure that he will never be lost in the shuffle. As his pregame cleats attest, he definitely has the look, both as a fashionista and a quarterback. I mean, he's exactly what you want your quarterback to look like, <laughs> and he knows it. Cam Newton is a big mother. He's like huge. 
I mean, what, Cam Newton's 6'5", 6'6", 250 pounds. I mean, he's a big guy. And he moves very well for his size. He's big. It's hard to get him on the ground. Cam Newton is one of the best escape artists in the league. You go to try and cut him off, and then he plants his foot and goes back the other way. And here's the read option. Newton keeps it himself, and it's wide open. Cam Newton might be gone. Newton's legs are electric, but he has another asset that shocks his opponents. His release. He has a very, very fast release. Damn, how'd you get that off? When he wants to get it out, he can definitely get it out, and he has a big arm. Though his stats were slightly down from his rookie year, Newton is among the top 10 quarterbacks on the players list for the second straight season. But the fact that he fell from 40th to 46th shows that not everyone thinks he's such a hot shot. He's definitely not in my top 10 quarterbacks. Damn, man. I remember playing him. I mean, he didn't impress me. Sheesh, man. Potential? off the charts. I mean, he could do some things great. He dove in the air and extended the ball out like Superman. It's just, I think as a quarterback, it's more mental. Newton deep drop. Backside pressure coming. Gets it. Pound it down. Cam wants a roughing call. Oh, man. Cam took his frustration out on Jerome Boger, and he yelled in his ear, and you cannot do that, Cam. You got to keep your emotions in check. I just think he needs to concentrate on that more than just the physical part of his game. He got a lot of work to do. I apologize, man. Cam, I know you're good, man. I Frustration, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It won't happen again. Let's take a look at the highlights, shall we? The Niners and the Panthers. There he is, Colin Kaepernick. All he has done in the postseason is win almost every time he's 3-1. and one. Cam Newton playing in his first career playoff game. Cam Newton here looking for Brandon LaFell, but it's picked mm. off by Patrick Willis. Nice play by Willis to go and get that. Yes, you got to understand, we got to yeah. get the ball back. Yeah. There's four minutes left in the game. We yeah, got to get the ball back. Yep. 23-10 is the final. Colin Kaepernick, solid. Frank Gore doing what he does. Averages almost 100 yards per game in the postseason. Okay. Gentlemen, boys and girls, little children, dogs and cats. What you're witnessing is something that you've probably never even seen before. And truth be told, you probably never see it again. But since you're tuning into this station, I'm your host, Cam Newton. And you're recently, and you're seeing Boogieville USA at its final. It's the quarterback draw. Oh. Oh. Somersault for the touchdown. Oh my goodness, the legend just goes on. And he landed on his feet. He did a, he did a full cartwheel. Oh my goodness. So speaking of those personal accolades, for much of the season, it's been a two-horse race for the MVP. However, things have gotten much more interesting of late. Cam and Brady still leading the conversation, but Russell Wilson, Carson Palmer, they're now in the mix as well. Cam balled Sunday. We can't deny that. Five TDs was the team's leading rusher with 100 yards on the ground. Shannon, did Cam lock it up, the MVP, this Sunday? I believe he did, mm -hmm. because he did, he did something Sunday that had never been done in the 90-plus year history of the National Football League. Broke five touchdowns, passed for 300 yards, rushed for 100 yards in the same game. He did that. He's passed for five touchdowns three times this year. I think the record is for about Peyton Manning in 2004. And if you look at all the guys' numbers, um, you know, Carson Palmer's 32 touchdowns, nine interception, Cam 33-10, Tom Brady 35-9. So if you look at the touchdown, they're right there. Cam has, I think, seven rush touchdowns. Carson has one. I think Brady has two. But the 14-year-old record is under nine. They went to Seattle. We think Seattle's a very, very good football team, and they beat Seattle. They beat the Packers, who's leading uh, the NFC North division. It's hard to get better than 14 and 0 when you only play 14 games. So you look at his body of work, you look at what he's done. Early in the year when we were talking about Cam as an MVP candidate, everybody says, well, he doesn't have any numbers. Look at his completion percentage, look at his QBR. 33 touchdowns and 10 interceptions is pretty good with another seven rush touchdowns, 500 plus rushing yards. See, you just can't look at him as a throw of the football. He's probably asked to do more. 
than probably these other guys because if you look at him, he's made camp, he's made uh, Ted Ginn Jr. a really a viable receiver. I call him 50-50 because there's a 50% chance he catch it, there's a 50% chance he drops it. But as of late, he's been phenomenal. Mm. And uh, I'll give the nod to Cam, and I think he sold it up. Because two, two of the last three games, his team was behind or tied in the game, and he led it for the he let him down for a game winning field goal against the New Orleans, New Orleans Saints mm -hmm. three weeks ago, and we saw what he did on Sunday. I think it's his. And it sounds like you have Carson Palmer second because you kept relegating Brady to third mention in all the stats. That you well, have. well, I, we're splitting hairs. I mean, second, third, it doesn't matter. It's kind of like it's over. It's like game who, over. Who, and the 2015 AP Most Valuable Player is Cam Newton. Welcome back to wagertalk.com. It's NFC Championship game. We've got Arizona at Carolina. Keep pounding, baby. Keep pounding. Let's go. Let's go. Game day, baby.
experience in who played at Auburn in the last game? Is it similar? I mean, obviously college pro. Nothing is comparable to the Super Bowl. It's just that he's off to an incredible start in his career. He had a um, tremendous college career. He was the number one pick of the draft. And with that comes a lot of expectations. And as I've always said, when you're the number one pick in the draft, it's not really an award. It's not a, it, it's an honor, but, but they're rewarding you for being a good college player, but also they're saying, okay, uh, we need you to be a really, really great player for us. And so there are expectations to come with it. And I tried my best to hold up my end of, 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 the, of the agreement when I was drafted number one by the Colts. And because you want to be that player for the, for, the, for the team that drafts you. You want to make them happy with their choice. And uh, uh, he is off to an awesome start and uh, making, I, I, I assume, making the Panthers very happy that they drafted him number one. It's Super Sunday morning here in Santa Clara, and the excitement is already building for the Panthers and the Broncos in Super Bowl 50. Levi Stadium in the background, and in the foreground, NFL tailgate. Boy, will there be a party there. Well, there are the old Super Bowl MVPs. Very cool in pregame. Peyton Manning, who won that honor nine years ago, would it be his last game? Maybe. What about the NBA MVP? Steph Curry, he pounded. Cam, the newly minted MVP. Couldn't get it going. Down three zip after Denver kicked a field goal in the opening drive. Von Miller made his presence felt right away. You watch a lot of guys with a quick first step. I don't know if I've ever seen anyone with that quick of a first step. That was Malik Jackson with the score for Denver. But how about Cody Ely? The game he had today. His first career interception. And Peyton Manning has now thrown a pick in all four Super Bowls in which he's played. That ties his boss, John Elway, for the dubious honor. I'm coming in best in one football game. That was a good play. Right there. Let's pick it up 16-7 oh. in the third. Overshoots 10 in. And TJ Ward, he loses it. However, the Broncos do recover. That secondary was outstanding. It was the turnovers that really did kill Carolina Panthers. And Denver calls those turnovers. And what not this was going Still down nine. It's Cody Ely again with the strip sack. Carolina recovers. Ely tied a Super Bowl record with three sacks on this day. And Carolina also sluggish. The number one scoring offensive league has the ball at midfield. And always talks about this kid was on the other team. He'd be the number one starting corner. So Carolina settled for a field goal to get it within six, and then this is the play that sealed it for Denver. Another strip by Von Miller. T.J. Ward recovered. Great play, though. Josh, bad hole there, but you got to talk to the you got to sit your 88 club it out. Ooh, right right now, he's, he's a champion. That's all he's thinking about. Doesn't matter how rocky the water are, how rocky the waters were, he, but they got the ship in. Obviously, it's a disappointing outcome. And it's one of those games that just just was not a good night for, for this to play this way. I know you're disappointed. I mean, just because of the momentum. We'll be back. Ron said Denver two years ago had a tough time. They bounced back. Uh, did you take that to heart when he told you after the game? No. Can you put a finger on what uh, why Carolina did not play the way it normally plays? But is there a reason why? Was there anything Denver did defensively that, I mean, I know you'd seen them, studied them. Was it pretty much what you had seen on film? Was there anything different you think they put in for this game? Nothing different. Cam, do we sometimes, I mean, I know football players don't forget, do we, do we sometimes forget the defenses can still take apart any offense in this game? Evan Mathis at podium 14. Cam, what did Coach say? Lost. Cam, on that fumble, was there when you were looking at the ball, was there a thought that you were trying to you know, pick it up and extend the play, or is that why you didn't hit the deck for it? Did, did they ever change anything defensively to take away your running lanes? No. I know you're disappointed not just for yourself, but your teammates, because you guys talked about how you are a band of brothers coming in, and, uh, and it's I mean, got to be real that's tough that's for everybody on the Load the box, force y'all to throw the ball. So you throw the football. That was that was the game plan. 
Close the box, one-on-one -on -one man outside. Uh, they got a couple big plays, but I feel like Whoa. Jimmy Lee and Roby need to come back and make more plays. Right away, right away. Cam clearly upset after the loss. He spoke briefly to reporters and then he walked out. Stephen A., do you have a problem with how he handled this? Yeah, I do. Um, <clears throat> it was an incredibly disappointing ending to an unquestionably illustrious season. Uh, Cam Newton showed us that he still has some growing up to do. I appreciate everything you just said. I, I must tell you from my heart, I'm a little conflicted here. It's apparent that Cam Newton is what he's always been. He's a sore loser. He's a bad loser. He hates it. He can't stomach it. He doesn't want to talk about it. He doesn't want to associate with his teammates when it's happening. You and I criticized him in the past, if we go back a year, two years, three years ago. Remember how he'd put the towel over his head and go down to the end of the bench while they're getting ramrodded? And, and act like, I don't want to associate with that mess over there. I'm better than that. And he would sit and sulk, and he would sulk and, and pout in his post-game interviews. And all of a sudden, I'm flashing back last night. I'm thinking, wow, it's the same guy. Okay, here's why I'm conflicted. At least, like, I, I don't want him to be a phony. I don't want him to be inauthentic. I don't want him to try to be somebody because we want him to be that he's not. And I think he's just showing you flat out right in your face last night, hey, this is who I am. I love to win. I have fun winning. But when I lose, I don't want to be around any of y'all. I don't want to answer any of these dumb questions. We lost. They played better. What else do you want me to say? I don't think Cam's a great quarterback. I think we've seen the best of Cam. Every week for the Saints. And Davison knocked him down anyway. His knee was down before the hit. You know, I'm pretty sure they don't like me. They don't like me. They don't, I don't like them. And I'm looking for them. They look for me. play better as a team and, and, and um, you know so for that for that situation to take place at hand you know it's a it's a slighted call either way you call it you know what I'm saying so you know that game to come down to just one one um, you know, call that could have made and the Panthers have announced that they are sidelining him for the rest of the season in an effort to get him back to 100% Kyle Allen Five and one as the starting quarterback will take it the rest of the way. They're at Green Bay on Sunday afternoon. Let's go out to North Carolina now. Will Brinson knows the Carolina Panthers very well. Will, uh, he's got one year left on his contract, the 2020 season, but they could cut him and only have two million in dead cap space. Do you think this is the end of the Cam Newton era in Carolina? This is noon. Tom Brady has announced he is leaving the New England Patriots. This is a big story. Multiple reports the Carolina Panthers are releasing quarterback Cam Newton after nine seasons with the team. When the news hit, the internet erupted with tweets about the possibility of Newton joining Bill Belichick and the Patriots as they're in need of a starter since Tom Brady split for Tampa Bay. Could Billy Football take a, if you can't beat him, join him approach? The Patriots head coach has referred to Newton as the best mobile quarterback in the NFL. And Cam is undefeated in two career games against the Pats. In those two games, he completed nearly 72% of his passes while throwing for 525 yards and six touchdowns next to just one interception. Plus, he ran the ball for 106 yards and a rushing touchdown. 
Well, I think the Los Angeles Chargers appear to be the right spot. I don't know if the New England Patriots have enough money for him, not to mention the fact that I don't think it's wise for him to succeed Tom Brady. Tom Brady, the six-time champion, uh, the one that's won 17 division crowns and went to nine Super Bowls. The Foxborough, New England area absolutely loves him. And, you know, if you're a no-name and you come in there, you're an up-and-comer with some promise, they'll be patient with you. But a guy that's been in the league for as long as Cam Newton has, but has come up short compared to the likes of Tom Brady, I don't think that's the ideal situation for him. The Carolina Panthers screwed over Cam Newton in terms of the timing in which they let him go. If you had let him go, you make this decision, you let him go weeks ago, then there would have been a plethora of teams available for him. The fact that they waited this long to release him, they screwed him over. Nobody's mentioning that, so I will. Yeah, it's an interesting thought because it does bring up the notion, what does an organization owe to a player who has done as much for it as Cam Newton has? Do you believe that with everything that has happened and all that he's done for the Carolina Panthers, that they owed it to him to make that move to give him a better chance to find a team rather than try and hold out some hope they might get something for him in a trade? Absolutely. First of all, the owner Tepper made it very, very clear when asked about whether or not he supported Cam Newton. He said, we got to look at his physical. We got to see what his physical health looked like. That's number one. Number two, you go out and get a new coach in rule who comes from Baylor. And what do you do? You not only give him $60 million, but you buy him out of his contract in Baylor for $6 million. Clearly, he was looking to move in a different direction at all. You knew less, way before a few days ago that Cam Newton wasn't your guy. So you definitely could have made the decision, not to mention the fact, where was Teddy Bridgewater going? He was available. This kid, P.J. Walker, for the Houston Roughnecks of the XFL. Where the hell was he going? You had available commodities out there that you could have targeted and you could have pursued, which you did. You didn't wait. You didn't need to wait until now to get rid of Cam Newton. You could have let him go earlier. You screwed him over as an organization, and we need to mention that about the Carolina Panthers. I'm sorry to say, they could have treated... Cam Newton better make the same decision, but you could have shown him more respect by letting him go earlier. Video, let you guys know, don't believe in hype. You know what I'm saying? I never once, and I say this right now, I never once wanted to leave Carolina. But let them believe, but let them make you believe in anything else. It was their decision, I stuck with it, and I knew that, so I asked for a trade. Everything else, let's be it. Joined now by Adam Schefter, of course, broke the story along with our own Chris Mortensen. And somewhere I picture that Bill Belichick is smiling, maybe even yeah. giggling someplace. And this seems like, I mean, one of the all-time low-risk, high-reward moves made by the Patriots. Steven, we said this all along. The Patriots are just the type of team to sit back, wait for the market to settle, and then when there's not a lot of action, move in and get somebody like Cam Newton, the former NFL most valuable player, signed to a one-year deal. And that's exactly what happened here. Hey, Cam, um, when you were in the round table with uh, OBJ and Todd and Victor, you mentioned the reaction when your agent called and said the Patriots mm -hmm. are interested. And you said, me and Belichick? How's that going to mesh? Uh, how how would you describe how it's meshing to, to this? Listen, point? listen, there's a lot of things that I just say that it, there's a perception, but at the end of the day, you know, it's still football. Uh, I've, I've loved it ever since I've been here. You know, I've been here going on a week now. Um, and, you know, just, you know, you hear rumors about certain things, but, you know, when you, once you finally get settled in on things like that, you know, none of that really matters. It's just all about, you know, finding a way to, to prove your worth on a team. Feel to you to bring Cam Newton to the team. And, and at this time of year, in the past couple decades, there hasn't been too much of a question as to who will play quarterback for you. Um, how are you approaching that specific spot this year? Yeah, well, I think, you know, that spot's the same as all the other spots on the team. You know, we got a long way to go, and, you know, we'll see how things turn out. Um, you know, I can't control how players perform. That's up to them. Uh, we'll give everybody an opportunity and, you know, see what happens. So, um, I don't know. Specific to Cam, would appeal to you with him just to bring him aboard? Uh, yeah, well, things worked out. We spent, uh, you know, quite a bit of time with Cam and, 
you know, he spent quite a bit of time with us. I think it was some, you know, mutual interest and, um, we went, spent, spent quite a bit of, um, number of different people and number of different conversations and I think just trying to, to see how the fit uh, would be and, and it was very positive on our end and I'm glad it worked out. Quick takeaway by the Dolphins. Here's Cam Newton now. And beginning his term as the quarterback at New England after nine years in Carolina. Ready? Ready. Newton still has it. And marches up the field, on the field, on the right side. And Newton looking for his first pass as a Patriot. And he comes, no, it's incomplete. In and out of the hand. And Newton takes it in for the touchdown. You like it? Go ahead, snap it. He's gonna run it. Inside the 10, inside the 5, and touchdown call on the field. Sam, I'm wondering if you could just describe the atmosphere out there today and how it felt to get into the first game under your ball. Uh, it was, it was different. Tom Brady, this is gonna be amazing. Foot of Michael Dixon. Bird hauls it in at his own 31. It's a 50 yard punt. All right, what's up, Cam Sleeve, right now? 17 game winning drives in his career with the Panthers. He's been rolling. He's been throwing it fantastic since the interception, which I think was as much sort of a mental mistake throwing that quick out to the wide side of the field. But now you need to generate pass rush, but are you willing to bring Jamal Adams out of the secondary as banged up as it is in coverage? Right now, Adams is eight yards back of the line of scrimmage and retreating. And Newton is firing in that direction, and the pass is caught by Harry to the left. Newton time. Nikhil Harry we come on a second down and 10 to 48. Four man rush. Newton stepping up. Takes a backhand flip and runs for a first down. To the 36 yard line and now the Patriots take a timeout. Field goal of course does them no good. Got to get into the end zone. The ball is at the 36. Four man rush. Newton on the time again fires. It's going to be caught at the 13-yard line by Edelman. But a huge tackle there to get him down inbound, so it forces them to the line of scrimmage. Do you use that timeout? They do not. Let the clock run down, and they're not going to even spike it here. Just going for it on a first down and 10, and Newton's going to fire, and it's incomplete. Are going to believe. They probably believe anyway he's played so well. 397 yards. This is it. Fullback's going to shift. He's going to leave Here we go. Cam is going to take it himself, and he doesn't get in. And the Seahawks are going to win the game. Line up with a power formation, and you got L.J. Collier and Leno Hill. Fake the handoff to Edelman, looking over at Burkhead. Open space, nice move, and he's up and over for the touchdown. Second and eight. Dancing around, what a move, couple of moves by Newton. First time he's ripped off a long run in this game, and he knows that was a huge play for the Patriots. I guess we should expect anything in 2020, but word that new Patriot QB Cam Newton has COVID has the Pats faithful shaking their heads. WBZ's Paul Burton set out to take their pulse amid growing uncertainty league-wide. 
Let's head to New England now. Uh, another result nobody saw coming. Patriots offense almost non-existent in this one. None of Cam Newton's top targets could get open. Hall of Famer Julian Edelman, just two catches for eight yards. Tough day for him. As okay. for Cam, three turnovers on the day as the Patriots lose and they drop below 500 for the first time this late in the season since way back in 2002. Here's Cam Newton after the loss. Obviously the performance today, you know, it showed a lot of, um, you know, much needed, uh, the time off show, but yet, you know, like I said, I have to be better and I will be better. We're way too much for the Patriots to handle yesterday. San Francisco handed New England a 33-6 loss, which is the worst home loss during Belichick's time with the Patriots. Quarterback play didn't help New England's chances as Cam Newton got benched in the fourth quarter after going 9-15 and tossing three interceptions. Cam also finished with only 98 yards through the air. Mm. They, they, they look bad. They, yep. they, they look like one of the worst teams in the NFL. So, somewhere last night, Tom Brady was shaking his head, maybe on the team plane going home, and empathizing with Cam Newton, thinking, I know exactly what he <laughs> is feeling. Remember, Tom was caught on the bench last year, I believe it was at Houston, yelling up and down the bench, somebody separate. Right. Pro Football Focus ranked the Patriot receivers last year dead last in separation. Nobody can get open because they're just not very good. And once Julian Edelman hit the physical wall where he just became this broken down, beat up shell of himself, th then he was your go-to. And remember, he led the league in drops last year to Julian Edelman. Well, they're ranked behind Alabama and Ohio State receivers in separation this year. That so is correct. So the 35th. Oh, you'd, you'd try to make that in a heartbeat, <laughs> especially the Alabama receivers. Yeah. Lord have mercy. Uh, Bill, do you plan on having Ken Newton as your quarterback going forward? Yeah, absolutely. Just want to get Stid a little experience here. Um, are you disappointed with the way the offense played today, given that you did have a full week of practice this week? Yeah, I just said that in the opening <laughs> statement, Ben. I said that we didn't perform well enough in any area. Coaching, playing, offense, defense, special teams, running, passing, defending the run, defending the pass, ball security, tackling, blocking, not that was good enough. Maybe I might have left something out, but I mean, we, you know, we just got to do a better job all the way across the board. And I don't think everything was bad, but there was enough bad for the results to be bad. So we need to improve in all areas. Cam, you uh, said during the week that you hadn't, that you felt like you hadn't played well after a game like this. How's your confidence right now? How, how's your mindset, and, and, and how do you approach things when you've been in a rut like this to, to pull yourself out of it? Yeah, I don't know, um, but I can't. You know, one thing that can't happen is um, you know, I can't allow myself to you know feel sorry for myself. Um, you know, I just I know what the issue is, and uh, you know you just have to attack it and, and do better. So you know what the issue is. What is the issue? Me not playing good. Is there something leading to that? It's simple. Play better. You know, I can't speak for everybody. Um, you know, I just stick to the man in the mirror, and I wasn't good enough. You know, I didn't, I didn't, and I, in no way, shape, form did I put this team in a position to compete. And you know, that's an excuse, but this is a National Football League where. A lot is put on the quarterback, and, and, and you know I have to deliver. And I haven't done that, and um, you know, quite frankly, you know, it's evident. So, you know, here moving forward, you know, I know what the issue is, like I just said, and you know, I just have to be. Better.